Welcome back to the channel, everyone. You know, this is a great episode to come back from a summer vacation. Uh, here on the east coast of the U.S., it's still really hot. It's after Labor Day, but I'm telling you, great time to get back into the video and back into discovering a little bit about photography. And today we're going to have a really great episode because what we're doing is we're going over to a friend's studio over in Essex, Mass. And he's working on a very special project that involves photographing old film cameras. And wait until you see what we got today. Uh, actually, it's a surprise to me because I have no idea, but he's got some kind of great camera that I haven't seen in a while or haven't even held in my hands. I don't know. So let's head over and uh, we'll see what we get. Either way, it's going to be kind of fun. So let me explain a little bit more about John's project that he's got going on. He, uh, I don't know where it came from, but he's he has some old vintage film cameras that are really kind of cool. He has some really interesting cameras. And these are old cameras that he and I used to use many years ago. But what he's done is, is he's decided to make studio portraits of these really interesting old film cameras. And I know a lot of you that <clears throat> follow this channel are, you know, old film people from way back. And I know you'll enjoy this episode. Although, I really don't know what it is that he's got for a surprise. It could be anything. It could be an old vintage lens, a big lens. It could be a camera that is, you know, <laughs> really, really rare. I don't know. So, we're headed over to Essex to see what we can find over there. Okay, we're here. Great. Can't wait to see what he's got dreamed up for me. <laughs> Can't wait to see what the big surprise is. You never know, but John, it could be just about anything. Hey, hey John, what's happening? Not too much. How are you doing? I hear you got a surprise for us today, huh? Yes, I do. Boy, Sounds I know, I know the I know what's gonna happen is we're gonna be astounded, right? Yes. Okay, good. It's good. an oldie, but a goodie. No, John, what have you got for us? Oh, oh, what is this? So we got a little <laughs> surprise for you today. Yeah, boy, look at this. <laughs> this is something. Boy, you know, it's kind of looking like a lens, maybe. Uh, Could be. I don't be. know. We'll Could see. Be. Yeah, cool. So, All right, let's here go. Here we go. An oldie, but goodie. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Holy mackerel. That is really something. So 8056, is that that's, what it is? That's what it is. Wow. Yep. Looks like it's in pretty good shape too. It's yeah, it's, it's been used, but it's uh, considering it's a 40 plus year old lens, it's in nice shape and wow. It goes perfect with the old F1 and MF yeah, motor drive. Yep. <laughs> you know, you and I both had two of those things. You know, you, yep. you had to have two lenses. Absolutely. <laughs> Great camera. That's right. Wow. We use those cameras forever. So, John, the cool thing here is that I just happen to have my Earth FD to X adapter in my bag. Excellent. And that means we can hook up the X-T5 like this. <laughs> and just looks so odd, doesn't it? This little teeny camera on this giant lens. We're going to take a couple of test shots. What do you think? See what we get. I think see we, we should. Do, if we get anything, we'll, we'll see what we get. It'll be cool. Be interesting to see what we get. Yeah. Let's give it a go. Yeah. All right. Watch. All right. Pick All it right. up. Here we go. All right. All right. So then we headed over to Gloucester to, to try and get some long shots with this lens and the Fuji X-T5 with the Earth adapter on it. Now, all of these shots coming up were done on a very, very heavy duty Gitzo tripod with a gimbal head on it. And that's how we did all of these shots. These aren't so bad. They're not quite as sharp as I would like them. We had to do a little bit of adjusting in Lightroom. But other than that, they aren't aren't really, really bad. They're not what it would be like with the R6. But I'm telling you, with this compression, they're not so bad. I was really kind of surprised. So the exposures here were done without the IBIS on. And they were shot at like 2,500th of a second at f8. And quite honestly... Um, they're probably a good mile away, or eh, maybe not a mile away, but, you know, really, they're pretty far away. They're maybe three quarters of a mile away. And the interesting thing is, is that on the Fuji X-T5, it makes this 
lens, the focal length, 1,200 millimeters, which is pretty darn long and compressed uh, when you're shooting this far away. And the other issue that we were running into was the fact that it was blowing like 20 miles an hour right in our face, which was, <clears throat> to me, it was, a, it was bouncing all over the place. We had a sandbag in place. We had all sorts of things. And I would have thought that, you know, the IBIS would have kicked in and would have made a huge difference here. But uh, in our testing, we found out that the IBIS wasn't doing any good at all, um, which I found surprising. So shooting at 25 hundredth of a second was better and without the IBIS on. And so that's what we did for most of them. So you can imagine at 1,200 millimeters how razor thin the focusing plane is on this lens and the atmospheric distortion at 1200 millimeters also is a problem so you add in all this stuff and focusing was rather sketchy uh, we got a nice there's a nice um adjustable knurled knob that you use for focusing which is great and it worked pretty well but you had to be really really uh judicious with it and uh, you know honestly it it's when you buy something like this, which for John it was it was three hundred and fifty dollars for this ginormous lens from yesteryear. Um, it worked actually worked pretty well. I was very surprised. So using focus peaking, I used it on red focus peaking, and that was working quite well as well. Uh, but like I said, with that razor thin focusing plane, it was really difficult. So this shot of the back of a, like a tanker, I guess this is an 18-wheel tanker, it was interesting to find that the closer we got, no atmospheric di distortion at all. So therefore, uh, we got nice, uh, clear shots, and it was, uh, it was very, very sharp. Now, the other thing that we ran into that was sometimes easy to take care of, sometimes not easy to take care of inside Lightroom, and that was chromatic aberration. The fringing here, the purple fringing, was just unbelievable on this seal. Um, and it was very difficult to get rid of. So I just left it in there and tried to explain it. So then we went back in the studio. And as I mentioned before, John is working on a project of photographing old film gear. Uh, it's like an art project. Um, he's photographing these old film cameras and lenses as uh, art. And I think it's kind of an interesting thing. And... We're going to look, to, you know, to look at some photographs that he's taken, and also we're going to uh, do a small interview with him. But that's part of the process. Tweaking. So now here we go. Do some adjustments here. Drop this down for this. That should help alleviate that. Make the camera a little more square. Start focus and uh, do one more test. See what this looks like. Oh, that's better. So the problem is. Yeah. I'm John Hurley. I'm a commercial and editorial photographer on the North Shore of Boston. And Kirk is here to ask me some questions about this photo behind me. So, John, this photo project, how did it come about? I mean, I, let, let me explain. First of all, I got this text message with like a six foot roll of flex behind him. And I said, John, what the hell is that? It's cool, whatever it is. So how did you get to that point and, and how did you come up with this project? So it's, it stems from a picture that I took, oh, actually a couple of decades ago of my Leica M6 in the studio when I was working full time in a commercial photo studio over in Salem, Mass. And I sort of had an idea I wanted to do some camera photos um, at that point, but life got in the way, we were really busy, there just wasn't time to do it. So jump forward a couple of decades. <laughs> and A couple? A couple. About three. <laughs> and I uh, was actually taking some equipment photos to sell off some equipment. And I said, you know, I have my Roloflex. I'd like to I'm gonna do a nice photo of it while I'm gonna have things set up to do my equipment uh, sale photos. And I just put a little extra time into it, made a photo, 
looked at it, I said, wow, this is really cool. I like this. I love Roloflexes, one of my absolute all-time favorite cameras. Um, and I sent, before I sent it off to Kirk, I sent it off to uh, another a friend of mine. And he made a comment that sort of made a little light bulb go off in my head. And he was like, oh, I really love the fact that the camera is, is is so huge or it's not proportional to what you would normally see the camera in. Basically, it's huge. And he goes, that's really cool. I like that. And I said, you know what? I have a lot of vintage gear. I love film cameras. I'm not so love in love with the film anymore. It's cool, but eh, I shot so much film. I'm, I'm all set with that. Are you tell me you're done with it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, don't know. I probably will set up a wet dock room again at some point. But anywho, um, I just sort of said, you know what? I'm going to document all this gear that I have. I think that the industrial design or the design of the cameras from that era, I think it's absolutely gorgeous. I love mechanical things, particularly cameras. Um, so I said, you know what? I'm going to do like beauty shots. To me, these are beauty shots of the cameras. So I said, you know what? I'm just going to photograph all this stuff and I'm, I'm going to put together a show and I'm going to do large format prints. I think I'm probably going to do 40 by 60s of everything and see if I can is that find out. Is, is that what this is? Yeah, actually, this is actually uh, f the piece of paper is actually 44 by 66 and I think the print is actually like 42 by 64 is the actual dimension of the print so I'm going to scale it down just a little bit to 40 by 60 because it's going to make it easy to mount and frame sure. if I go up that extra two inches it just makes everything more complicated and expensive <laughs> so I'm just photographing uh, like basically uh, Kirk and I started out as photojournalists uh, in the very late 70s for Kirk and for me, or maybe a little earlier for Kirk, not trying to date him, but uh, and I started in the, the very early 80s, and a lot of the things I'm photographing it is gear that I actually used in the course of my career, gear that I lost it after, like all of us. It's like, <laughs> oh, I, 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 I want to have this, I want to have you this like Leica. like an 800-5.6? Yeah, the Leica, the 800-5.6. <laughs> uh, Great, John. Thanks so much for allowing me to come in and Photograph you photographing <laughs> this 800.56 behind me. Um, I think uh, we, we had a great time doing it. And um, believe me, we'll be back for more stuff, I'm sure. Yes, yes, <laughs> absolutely. Great, thanks. You're welcome. Hey, John, thanks. Appreciate it. You're that welcome. was a lot of fun, man. <laughs> yes, it was. All right, talk to you later. All right, see you later, Kirk. So, that was an interesting experience. That's one of those lenses that I wanted to use for a long time when I was back in my 20s. <clears throat> but his project, his project overall is really something that's very interesting and I would definitely love to be able to see the exhibition if he ever is able to make that come to fruition. So if you wouldn't mind, hey, give me a like and subscribe and make a comment, that would be awesome. And remember to check out capeinphototours.com. And that's it for this week and we'll catch you next time.